Hi, this is Ram Dave Dale Borglum with you for another episode of Thursdays with me. And on Tuesday, somebody walked into a primary school in Texas, killed 19 children, two adults, and wounded 17 people. As well, there's a war going on in Ukraine, climate change. We don't have to look too far to find things to rip our heart open. I've gotten several emails. How can I deal with what I'm feeling right now? I need support. And Walt Whitman said, sometimes touching another human being is almost more than I can bear. To stay that open, to stay open to the beauty and the, the tragedy of human life is a real challenge. In Buddhism, they often talk about compassion being a combination of joy and sadness. There's sadness because people are suffering and there's joy because our hearts are that open. Is it possible to think about somebody shooting 19 children to death and how angry that makes you feel and how frustrated and how helpless that makes you feel and at the same time find a spaciousness of heart that is large enough to hold or contextualize all the pain that you're feeling. Rumi said that grief is the garden of compassion. Compassion is the ability to keep your heart open when there is suffering. Stephen Levine called compassion, keeping your heart open in hell. At the beginning of the pandemic, so many people came to me and said, there's so much pain in the world, there's so much fear, there's so much grief that I can't keep my heart open. And what I found then, and as I'm finding now, is that the practice is at times working with my own pain for sure. But at the same time, can I sit down and open my heart wide enough that I begin to feel a global compassion, that I begin to trust that the true nature of my heart is boundless, that if I go into my heart, if I go truly deeply into my heart, and I find that place that Rumi was talking about, where grief is the garden of compassion, that all the pain in the world does not begin to fill up the boundless nature of my heart. Thomas Merton, the great Christian writer, mystic, said, love and prayer are learned in the hour when prayer becomes impossible and the heart turns to stone. It's not so hard to keep your heart open when it's a perfect day and you're not reading about children being shot and you're at the beach and you're with somebody you love and you're looking forward to a perfect meal. But how about today when we look back a few days on that shooting? How about today when a friend of yours has just been diagnosed with cancer or tomorrow when a friend of yours is really suffering because of something that has come up in her life? So, Almost the paradox of spiritual life is that we're so conditioned to try to get away from suffering, and yet freedom lies, healing lies in leaning into suffering, moving into the place that we've been trying to get away from. Healing happens through contact with the sacred. Can we be with the sacred, in the sacred, realize the sacred, and at the same time there's this human story going on that includes innocent children being murdered. So compassion, the compassionate heart, the open heart, has some defining qualities. One of them is it's a boundless heart. And by boundless, we mean that it's not cluttered up with a lot of concepts, particularly the concept of I, that the heart is vast like the sky. And into this piece of sky comes weather, there's clouds and there's thunder and there's lightning and sometimes there's sunshine and sometimes there's gray. But we can keep asking ourselves, are we the sky or are we the weather? Can we surrender into the spaciousness? And it is a difficult surrender at times because it means letting go of who we think we are. It means dying into love. Another quality of the open heart is the quality of being connected. Can you stay connected to yourself? Can I stay connected to myself, who I really am, 
and realize, think about the pain of the parents whose children were shot, the pain of the people in the Ukraine, and on and on. Can I be so connected with myself? Can I be connected with you? Can I be connected with God? Whatever we imagine as uh, that which does not change your own true nature. Boundless heart, spacious heart, a connected heart, and finally a warm heart. Can our hearts remain warm even when there's something screaming in us to get lost in anger, to fight, to protest, to get so mad at people who would are so wounded themselves that they hurt other people? Anger may be an appropriate response right now, but to the extent we can be angry and be compassionate at the same time, our protest, our fight for social justice will be that much powerful. To the extent we're lost in reactivity and fear and, and a, a contracted heart, then our message will be very much diminished. So we're not making the pain go away, but we're working with the suffering that's coming out of the pain. We're going so deeply into our hearts that can, we can be with all that pain and feel global compassion the joy of an open heart, the sadness of human suffering. And I feel love and compassion for you. Thank you. Thank you for being here.